Aloha. This is Carol Mon Lee on Community Matters with my special guest, Dr. Colette Brown, who holds a chair professorship at the School of Social Work and in, is also the chair of the gerontology specialization. So welcome, Colette. Oh, thank you, Carol. Well, today we're talking about a really important study that was just published, uh, and Dr. Brown was the co-author from Hawaii, and it is about the economic security of older women and men in Hawaii. And we often lump older women and men together, yes, but I think your study really identifies a more uh, important um, details that um, many of us didn't know. Well, we hope so. You know, um, over the past decades, poverty rates for older adults in this country have actually been declining, and that's really good news. But that's really, as you just said, when we homogenize, when we group older people together. What we also know is that older women are continually and pervasively more poor than older men. This is throughout their lives and it culminates in later life. Not only is it uh, women in general, we don't want to homogenize older women themselves, but when we break it down by ethnicity, race and ethnicity, we also see even more differences with regards to financial security and financial insecurity. I see. So now, is you, these results comparable to what's been happening on the mainland? Because I know this study mm -hmm. was as a result of a mainland study. Well, what we did was in the School of Social Work, where, where I work, um, we partnered with the Institute for Women's Policy Research, which is a really very uh, wonderful research group out of D.C. that look at gender issues, uh, primarily economic issues, but health issues and other issues as well. And not only older women, but women throughout their life. So we partnered with them uh, for the analysis and then came up with a recommendation specific to Hawaii. I see. And so how long did the study take from it, Hawaii? It took us about a year mm -hmm. to put the whole thing together. And mm -hmm. where's the data mm -hmm. coming from? The data it looks at microdata from the U.S. Census. So the 19... Uh, the from 2000, 2010 to 2014. Census. And we looked again those years so that we could get a large sample size because we really did want to look at race and ethnicity in okay. addition to gender. Okay, great. Well, let's mm -hmm. get right into okay. some of those results. And I know we have some um, several slides. So we're going to go through... Uh, a few of them, and even though our viewers cannot see, uh, I mean, our viewers can see them, but our listeners cannot, we're going to talk about the results, and it's very okay. interesting. So what is our first slide, uh, Rich? Here we go. So the cover, the, um, this is a particular characteristics of older women and men in Hawaii. Right. And so what did you well, what find What we did out? was uh, we wanted to look at, again, the different ethnic groups. So we looked at Japanese, Caucasian, Filipino, Native Hawaiian, Chinese, other Asian, for example, Korean, Asian, Indian, uh, those with uh, two or more races, and also Hispanic, and then uh, the total. And if you look at women and men, what you see is the same thing that we see on the, on the mainland, and that is women are more poor than older men, and that's in every racial and ethnic group. So this is very different from the mainland because, of course, the ethnicities in Hawaii are so much more uh, diverse than you find in the mainland. That, that's mm -hmm. right. So you do see differences even here. So, for example, what you do see is you see other Asian really are, are more poor, and those with the greater personal, median personal income are looking at Japanese-American older women, but still much less than men. I see. Okay. And how about our next slide? Okay, this just looks at marital status. And the reason we wanted to look at that is there are a number of reasons why women are poor. And, and they're really, uh, they're quite complex and interrelated. But one of them is marital status. And we know that because you have one income rather than two, you're more apt to be poor when you're older. And we also know that here in Hawaii, about 57, 58% of older women are what we call single. And that's widowed that is never married, um, and that's divorced. So about 58%. So the, uh, the idea that you will live alone when you are older as a woman is much greater than if you were a man. So not only would you live alone if you're a woman, mm -hmm. more likely, but you're much more likely to be poor. Uh, you're more likely to be poor, and again, for a number of reasons, right? That your income throughout your life is less than the man. Right? So see. that's one reason. Another reason is women still are very often in segregated employment. Jobs that are primarily women uh, holding them as opposed to the jobs that are primarily men. There are industries that are still much more male oriented. For example, just look at the tech industry okay. right, as one example. Okay. Then we really also haven't looked at balancing work and home. We talk about this a lot and I'm glad that there are uh, uh, political discussions more, but we still haven't done anything like other countries 
that allow people to balance work uh, with their family. So we don't have child care policies, really. We don't have affordable child care. We don't have uh, pension care giving credits. We don't have paid family leave. There are a number of things that we could do that would make things so much better for not just working women, but working men as well. So uh, then the fact that there are separate maybe tracks of career mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. one thing, but mm -hmm. that's not in it of itself the reason for the poverty mm -hmm. uh, for women it's because the salaries right are different well there's exactly there's participation rates right and there's poverty rates participation so, rates participation okay. rates so um for not for all women if you look at racial ethnic minority women very often their work trajectory is very much like the white males they work throughout their life if you look at african-american older women for example if you look at their work history they've worked their entire life but they are the poorest of the poor because of what you just said wages and, very often, and the industries that they may be working that's in right. are not going to be as well paid. As that's right. If you're looking at home care workers, you know, you know, I think the other issue here is that we really don't value care work, do we? So whether it's uh, care that you're paying for or care that you're providing in your own home, we don't value it. How many women today are actually quitting their jobs as middle-aged women to take care of an older parent? And what happens to those women? What happens to their pension, to their Social Security? It goes down because of that. So they're doing a wonderful thing, but they're going to be penalized economically for it. So whether so in that case, the family may end up benefiting the whole family because grandma is being cared for. That's right. But individually, right. assuming that the father mm -hmm. dies, mm -hmm. the the mother, the surviving mm -hmm. uh, in later years, will have less resources. That's right. That's right, which is uh, really a sad statement, I think, about, again, about what we value mm -hmm. uh, in our country. Other mm -hmm. countries do things quite differently, as you, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look at our next slide. Okay, this just looks at the median annual personal income for older women and men in Hawaii. And again, the gray is male and the green is female. And again, what you can see just consistently is that men do work more uh, uh, earn more uh, than women. And you do see some racial differences here. Again, you're looking uh, at Japanese older women and Caucasian older women and Chinese older women really uh, making a higher median income. What this doesn't take into account, of course, are how many jobs one has to get that income. So it, uh, it's, it's a, broad, a broad number. So when you see how many jobs to get that income, are you saying that men's careers are usually on a, a different trajectory? They may work in one or two jobs longer as opposed to women right, interrupted. Right. You know, what we see is that men's work is uh, more, much more rarely interrupted than a woman's. You know? And in some ways, you know, it, it makes a little bit of sense if you're looking at um, a spouse that makes twice what you make. Perhaps it makes more economic sense that you're the one who stays home and takes care of a sick child, a disabled brother or sister, an older mother or father. But it still impacts your income, your own income, when you retire. Right, and then because women live longer, it's going to impact them, particularly if they survive their spouse. Absolutely, and health care is a big ticket item when we get older. Right. right. So actually these results aren't too surprising, are they? They're not surprising. They really verified uh, and validated what we know uh, on the continental U.S. It did bring us some more information about race, ethnicity, and again the importance of the kind of income women get and why we have to protect things like Social Security so much. All right. Okay, I think we have another slide. The data is really interesting. So let's see, our see. next slide is the... Uh, this just looks at the official federal um, poverty thresholds and index in Hawaii, and really just trying to um, show you, again, looking at male uh, and female. This, this is specific to something called the Elder Index, and this is, this is actually very, very interesting. This was developed by the University of Massachusetts and the National uh, Council on Aging. And they looked at the, po the regular poverty threshold, and they said that's really too conservative because it doesn't look at housing, and it mm -hmm. doesn't look at health care costs. And when you do that, what you find is that, especially people in Hawaii, we need a much greater uh, income, and our poverty threshold is actually quite higher because of uh, uh, primarily our ha a very, very high housing costs. So you say our poverty threshold is higher. Exactly. So where, where the poverty threshold may say 20000 for a couple, 
it may be looking at the elder index taken into consideration housing you may if you make more uh, less than 40 or 50 you might be actually poorer and I think we all know examples that that's quite true right mm -hmm. right okay so um, compared to other states how mm -hmm. do we how do we compare to other states our poverty rate is actually not as bad as others as some other states and again we we don't we we think well, we need to go back and look at this more closely but we think it's primarily because so many women are in the workforce here in Hawaii because again the cost of living in, in, in our wonderful state and also the fact that so many people have two or three jobs to make that income that they need right mm -hmm. and um, of course in Hawaii we've had this uh, uh, tradition of women working outside the home much longer than some that's of the right. other states that's right that's, right. that's ac absolutely very true right so um, we're talking about career. Mm -hmm. So it looks, sounds like mm -hmm. poverty then really has a long-term uh, growth period in the life of a person, right? It starts out you know, it, as soon as you start your You know, it, it does. And again, it's, there's so much. You know, I'm an educator, so I believe so much that we need to educate young men and young women about uh, the right uh, the right kinds of careers in terms of income in terms of financial security um, so that they don't end up in those jobs that pay them so little and on the other hand we all know that there are some jobs that do pay little and that then speaks to what is the role then of policy is it okay that we have poor older people in our in our society it's a question we have to ask ourselves is it okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, I, w I would say no. I'm a social worker, so I would say no. You know, I work with people who have been good citizens their whole life. They've worked hard. They've raised their families. Um, they haven't been in any kind of trouble. They've contributed to their community, and they end up poor because they can't afford their health care costs, their long-term care costs. Do I think that's okay? No, I don't think that's okay. And how does that affect our community by having uh, older women who are... Uh, in much more need than men. You know, one of the reasons we did this study is because we want people to become more aware of this issue. You know, no one is proud of being poor, so people hide it a lot. Right. So people usually don't go around and say, oh, I'm poor, I can't join you for lunch because I don't have the money to right. pay for lunch. So we want people to understand these issues, to understand, as you just said, it's a long-term process, right? Yeah. And that we can't close our eyes to it anymore. We really have to look at what policies can specifically help Younger women and older women. Younger women are just tomorrow's older women. Right? <laughs> I will hope so. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to take a break, and after the break, we'll talk a little bit more about what we can do to help and what, what needs to be done to change, okay? Great. So I'm with my guest, Dr. Colette Brown from the UH School of Social Work, talking about a very important subject, the economic security of older women and men in Hawaii. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at, from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to politicians to regulators to the utility so please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Welcome back this is Carol Mon Lee on Community Matters with my guest Dr. Colette Brown to talk about a very important study that just came out on the economic security of older women and men in Hawaii. So we were talking about policy but before we get to policy I'd like to cover three more slides that uh, on the survey uh, brought to uh, everybody's attention so let's get to the next slide rich and that says poverty rate for older women and men in hawaii so what is the poverty again rate? so what you can see and this is again this looks at the poverty rate which is the official poverty rate so it's not the it's the more conservative poverty rate not the elder index that we just talked about before the break and here again though you're looking at racial differences you're looking at 
um, other Asian populations having almost a 20 percent uh, poverty rate for women, so one out of every four or five women. Um, so but in every category? In every category, women are more poor than men so, and have a higher poverty rate. So again, this is just um, very consistent with our data from the mainland as well. Right. So mm -hmm. in every category, which is every ethnic group, right, That's Asian, right. Chinese, Hispanic, other Native Hawaiians, white, Japanese, Filipino. That's right. Women uh, far, well, uh, ha have more poverty, higher, 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 higher poverty, rates of poverty. Rate. That's right. Okay. Okay. And our next slide. And this one is entitled this Retirement looks at Income. Retirement Income Sources, right. And this looks at the major retirement, the ways that we get our money when we retire. So we hopefully have Social Security which is the primary income for men and women as okay. we get older. Let's go through one at a time because those are very sure. important. So Social Security. What so Social Security. So what results. you see, if you look across, and I'm looking here at the uh, women, you're looking at uh, the lowest rate is 79%. So a very high percentage of older women do receive Social Security. So that's, that's good. Uh, those who don't usually are immigrant populations who have not earned enough quarter benefits to be eligible. And if you look at the median income, uh, the lowest is about almost 11,000 and the highest is nearly 13,000. So it's an average of 12,000. So 12,000 a year, the uh, older women, and how do we define older women, what uh, age? That's a great question. Yeah. We should have said we that. that. It's 65 and over. Some people uh, do look at 60, but we were looking at 65 and over primarily because we have a uh, uh, good longevity here in the state. Right. So. so age 65 and over women average about 12,000 across all right. Well, this is actually the median, not the, oh, the we'll median. talk about the, the mean, the average in another okay. slide. So this is the median. Uh, if you look at the pensions, uh, you look at a, a smaller number. So you're looking at a, a low from, what, 26, 24,000 actually with Filipino to a high of 42% who actually get pensions. So among those who do, they get about 12,000, but only about 35% actually get a private pension. Ah, uh, okay. So that's what's imp really important to notice in that right. slide. Okay. And so other sources of income besides um, Social Security? Some people have earnings. Mm -hmm. Again, a small number. So those are women who are continuing to work after exactly. age 65. Exactly, like okay. me. And then you have your assets. Uh, you know, if you have a, a, a real estate, if you have other kinds of assets, Again, a very much smaller number for women than men. And so meaning yeah. women have fewer assets. Fewer assets, than exactly. Men. And, is, and the assets themselves are valued? Much less. Much less. Much, much so less. So if they own a home or an apartment, mm -hmm. uh, the typically it would be valued less, less. than, That's worth right. less than That's a man, right. uh, older That's man's. Right. Okay. The, only, uh, the only source of income that is similar between men and women is actually supplemental security in, income, uh -huh. which is a means-tested um, uh, income source from the federal government that supplements your income when you're poor. So, right. Okay. So not all women will get that, even though they qualify for social that's security. That's right. In fact, we have a. Uh, that's something we really have to look at policy-wise because we have a, a lower percentage of women actually are uh, receiving that uh, compared to a poverty rate. So there's a number that are eligible but aren't receiving. Okay. So mm -hmm. what? So in addition to those assets, I guess we're not including something like whether. They're getting family support. That's right. Yeah, we're not including that. Hard right. to measure. That's right. That's right. right. OK. I think we have another slide. Let's get to our next slide. Now, this one's interesting because this looks, again, at the mean, the average income, right? So you're looking at women's average income of about 26,000, oh, closer to 27. And you're looking compared to men's average, which is about 43. That's a big difference. It's a very big difference. And think about that when you're older. Could you live on $26,000 a year? And again, this is an average. The, the challenge with looking at averages is it doesn't tell you who's on the bottom. Right. And right? who is on the bottom? You're looking primarily at, on the mainland, it's primarily African-American women, immigrant women. Here in Hawaii, we would, it looks at, uh, I would suggest it's immigrant women as well, and also Filipino women are, are lower income. Uh -huh. That's interesting. And men? Uh, what are the highest incomes? Which ethnic groups have the highest uh, incomes? Whites, Chinese, and Japanese. Whites, Chinese, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. true for both men and women? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason why, do you think, speculation on why certain ethnic groups uh, 
have lower incomes? Uh, you know, I, I think there's, again, there's a complex issue, mm -hmm. right? So you're looking at things like certainly socioeconomic status, education, types of jobs. You're looking at the type of education they get. You look at opportunities that they have or don't have. You're looking at things like discrimination. You're looking at immigration histories. There, there are a lot of variables that really result in what we're seeing. Yeah, very interesting. And I think you have one last slide on um, some of the data that was uncovered. Let's see. No, I guess we don't have another slide. That was it. Well, there's so many. So let's talk a little bit then mm -hmm. about now what? We know this, we have this information. Uh, mm -hmm. What can, mm -hmm. what are you looking at doing in terms of developing policy changes mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. how can we mm -hmm. help older women in Hawaii? Well, we look at younger women and we look at older women. So if you look at younger women, there are a number of things that I think are important to do. And one is really looking at um, unequal pay. We still don't have equal pay between men and women. And I would like to think that we will not let that one go because you see what happens when there's unequal pay. We still have occupational segregation. Um, there are still jobs. There are still very much more male. There, you know, there's something the law, for example, has made, medicine has made some you know, very important changes. But other fields are still, we're not seeing that. So but is I it done, though, on an individual industry basis then? Or are you, as an organization or as a, a matter of policy, are nationwide and locally? Are we looking at some I, I legislation? Like, yeah. oh, well, I'd like to think that we could do what other countries do, like uh, whether it's France or Iceland or Germany or so many others, where gender equality is in their constitution. It's just something that they insist, because we know now the effects when we don't have it. It's very clear. Women are more poor than men throughout their life and also in later years. So that's, that's one thing I think we need to do. I think we have to really um, connect it to that as the issue of segregated employment. I mean, as, as educators, as family members, as businesses, what are businesses doing? Um, I, I, I mentioned this in another talk recently, but Michelle Obama gave a talk to the tech leaders a number uh, this past year, just a few months ago. And if they're notorious, of course, for having a culture where it's primarily male. Uh, women leave that field twice as often as men do. So there's something there that's not right. And she really challenged them and said, if you really you say you want women in the workforce, if you do, make room. What are you doing here to actually allow and encourage and recruit women and retain them? So that's something that we really have to look at as well. But, but how do you explain then that there is often, um, as you said, we talked about earlier about mm -hmm. how women making the choice to mm -hmm. whether it's to stay home to care for mm -hmm. newborns mm -hmm. or their parents mm -hmm. um, and then getting out of the workforce. Right. And I know we talked right. about do we pay for that's that right. kind of that's a right. leave right. or the care? That's right. Well, and I think very often, that's, you used a great word, choice, because I think very often it's not a choice. It's, you don't really have a choice. Mom needs care, a child needs care, a disabled elder needs care. There is no choice. There's not enough care out there. And that's something to, when we look at helping older women, it also helps younger women. We need long-term care services and supports, right? And we don't really have that today. So that's something that's really, I think, very, very critical that we support long-term care. Mm -hmm. That will help older women, but younger women. Uh, the New York Times had an article a while ago, maybe two weeks ago, that looked at the proposed cuts to Medicaid as an example. And they said, who's going to be hurt by this? It's the daughters and daughters-in-law, because they're the ones who provide the care. Because 75% of those who receive Medicaid are the disabled and older adults who need long-term care. Right. So you take that funding away, who's going to feel it? Not just the older adult, but their caregiver who's primarily a woman. Right. And here in Hawaii, I know this past legislative session, we've had this Kapuna Care That's Bill. Right. So tell That's us right. how that might That's help. Right. Uh, Kapuna Care is a wonderful program that, is, that the legislature has funded. Uh, uh, it's operated through the Executive Office on Aging, and they work with many community agencies to provide home-based care. So that will make an enormous difference. The more that there are supports out there, it will really encourage people to not have to make that choice. Right, that they will be able to stay in the workforce because there will be supports that will still provide the care to mom or to dad or to brother or sister or to a child. So specifically, how does that care work? So it, it provides funding right. or it, some kind of it credit? Would, or? It would provide funding. So that's one way. There are other ways that can be done, and we hope that we can actually work with our, our legislators on this. So, for example, many countries actually give the primary caregiver pension credit 
for each child they have. So for example, if you have three children, you would be credited six years in their, their own social security system. So that's a wonderful way to acknowledge what we all know, that children are wonderful, but they're expensive. It costs money to raise children. The more money you are using to raise children, the less you have to put into your retirement plan. Yeah. I see, and yet here we are facing a, an administration that's looking at things like cutting long-term yes. Social Security, Medicare, yeah. Medicaid, and yeah. things like that. It's, it's, um, you know, it's such a wonderful thing that we're all living longer. We mm -hmm. all know that's wonderful, but we also know that health care is a big ticket item. We know that even if we don't want to become disabled, we might, and it's very, very costly. We have very few uh, opportunities right now. People have to pay for such care. So the idea that med Medicare or Medicaid would be cut will be not only problematic for older adults, but for their families as well. Yes, indeed. Well, we're about ready to wrap up, Colette. So what I'd like you to do is to look into camera four and yeah. uh, give us some closing thoughts and maybe some ideas of how we can help in what you all plan to do uh, and what we can see for the future. Okay, great. I think uh, you know, there's always something that we can do individually right, to stop poverty. We can learn more about finances, um, financial literacy. So there's, of course there are things we can do individually. But society and policy has a huge role as well. Because we want a society where older people, all older people, have the right for a just and a good old age. And right now that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing too many women and too many racial ethnic minority women really suffering from poverty. So yes, by all means, learn about finances, but also support issues like long-term care, support programs like Kapuna Care, support the education of young girls so they can reach their potential in getting the kinds of jobs that will maybe prevent or stop this cycle that we're seeing today. And if we want to find out more about the study, how can we do that? Yes, you can go to the School of Social Work um, website. There is a link to, that, to the study. They can get the entire study from that link. Okay, the University of Hawaii School of Social That's Work. That's right. Okay, okay. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Colette, for taking us through this very important study. Oh, thank you, Carol. Okay, well, yeah. my guest today has been Dr. Colette Brown, who is a chair professor at the University of Hawaii School of Social Work. And she is the co-author of the current, this recent study, Economic Security of Older Women and Men in Hawaii. So thank you for joining us. This has been Carol Mon Lee, Community Matters at Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.